Hello and welcome back to Cloud Force Vibes. So I made it home early from work today and I have a whole bunch of work to do in the greenhouse and I was gonna try to shoot some other video and look around and do all kinds of stuff but what I figured we'd do is we'd get down into the nitty gritty and we'd take a look at some remountings. Um, I have some stick mounted plants, I have some new arrivals and things like that that just desperately need to get sorted out. Um, I do not like to leave things in their original pots or on their mounts for too long in my environment. I really like to use um, cork bark, virgin cork bark if you can get it. And I like to use fresh clean moss um, and make sure that things are gonna do okay in the long run. Um, I'd rather cause some disturbance now than you know, have to deal with it later on and everything's a mess and potentially lose the plant. So I think I have four, five, um, I don't know. I'm going to take you off here in a minute and we're going to go actually take a look in the greenhouse and we'll pull the plants out and get them out here and get them situated. Um, there's going to be a lot of editing to this video. You're not going to have to watch this whole terribly boring process. But um, I figured we'd go step by step and we would show you guys what to do when you need to mount orchids or take them off a stick or remount them or whatever. Uh, we've covered this. I know you've seen this with other people, but I do things a little bit differently sometimes, and I just thought maybe you guys would appreciate coming along for the journey. So, first things first, the most important step, we got to take our stag moss, and we've got to get it moist. So, we're going to go ahead and peel the thing back, careful not to get into our coffee. And we are going to take a nice corner of this thing off and just lob it down right in the bowl. Now, that should be plenty. I do a lot of mounting, so we'll take another little handful out. <clears throat> Hopefully you could hear me over the moss struggle. So, now that we've got our moss in the bowl, I like to just kind of massage it a little bit. I don't like to tear it apart too much. I like to keep as many of the you know, long fibers in there as I possibly can. So get it down, make sure it touches the bottom of your bowl. We're gonna take some, you can use distilled water, you can use RO water, rain water, whatever you'd like to use, whatever water that you guys use with your orchids. And we're just gonna put a whole bunch of it in this bowl. You want the moss to start to float up a little bit, just like that. See how it's starting to float? And that's going to be enough water to get started. We might have to put a little bit more. So that's that. We're going to let this sit and soak and come back and see what we've got in a minute. Okay, we're in the grow room now, and we're going to go ahead and take a quick look around not too much going on I do have a couple new blooms but that's not really why we're here we'll just take a quick peek at a few things I do have something here opening up I'm excited to share with you guys here soon um, our little moss project from the other day is going really well I mean they're already perking back up and starting to grow again um, yeah so we're going to get rid of a stick today, which is always exciting. We're going to go ahead and remount this Dendrobium aberrans. It's got a, I don't know if you can see that, hopefully. It's got a new root forming right there. And we are going to take the opportunity to do this, even though I don't see a new growth yet. So we're going to go ahead and take the risk, get it off here and get it onto a fresh clean mount because I do not want to take the risk of the base of this plant rotting and me losing this plant. The bases do not like to stay wet even though the plant likes to be moist. Very much like the rhodostictum, just like any Latoria type. So yeah, definitely this one's coming off the stick today. Um, we are going to go ahead and remount our Kyloschista. I did learn how to say this word and spell it because apparently I had the spelling wrong as well. So this is coming off of here. 
Uh, it hasn't bounced back into growth yet, but it is alive. And we're going to hope that giving it a new mount, freshening it up, is going to get it to come back into growth. Um, I have tons of stick mounts that I'm dying to get rid of. But the Sophronides, um, it's just not quite ready. It's got roots all over coming. Uh, I didn't, never knew this, but Sophronides have ruby colored roots. See that, guys? Pretty neat. Um, but I'm not going to take that one off quite yet. I don't have the courage to do that right now. And same thing with the Lelia Pygmaea. I'm sorry, the uh, Sophronides Pygmaea. It's got new roots coming, um, shooting out the sides of the moss, but I just do not want to risk messing up this tiny little plant quite yet. Once I see new growths and I get to learn, oh, here we go, and I get to learn a little bit more about how they grow and how they are as plants, then I might take that risk. But until then, I just don't know, just don't know enough about them. Um, same thing with this guy, the Tolumnia. Uh, Calokyla that I recently got it's gonna stay on here for now just because it's in bud I want to see that flower open and I do not want to disturb it until something happens with that either it blasts and I do it anyway or it actually blooms and we get to see this guy but I am NOT touching that plant yet we are going to take care of this Ionopsis Utricularioides it is drying out way too fast and I don't think it likes it and it has a new growth oh, coming in right back there I don't know if you can see it or not but we'll take a look at it closer here in a minute so that's three um, I have this Comparetia speciosa speciosum nope Comparetia speciosa I just got it not too long ago it's got new roots coming on it down there and it's got a new leaf forming so I think now is the time I'm gonna get it off of this cedar plank even though it's in good shape and it's gonna go on a piece of cork and finally down here for the mounts I have this this is a Lelia pumilla And um, it has a new root coming straight from the base and a new growth down here. So we're going to go ahead and take this time and take this opportunity to peel it off of this and get it on some cork and make it happy and make me happy because I cannot stand the cedar planks. Um, last but certainly not least, I'm going to go ahead and deal with this Paphinia rugosa today. Like I said before, it's in pure sphagnum moss, and it just has to come out of here immediately. Um, it's got a new root coming. I think it's got a new growth pushing out on the side. And I don't know what we're going to do with this. It might go back in this basket in different media, but it might go on a mount. So this is going to be our surprise. We'll save this one for the end. We'll see what happens. But those are the one, two, three, four, five, I guess six plants that I'm going to be dealing with today. Like I said, you're not going to have to watch it all, but I just wanted to show you I'm in here. This is the before, and we're going to come back here in a few minutes when we get the table set up, and we're going to start taking them off their mounts and taking them out of their pots, and we're going to go ahead and get a good look at these plants, get them cleaned up, and make them happy. Okay, so we've got our plants here. Um, we're going to go ahead and remount them. I've got pieces of cork already selected, made, washed. I skipped all that process. I've already moistened everything down except for this one. And we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Like I've said in my one video I've done with mounting in it already, whenever I'm unmounting something, I don't care what it is, I like to make sure it's moist. For me, it makes things a whole lot easier. And um, yeah, from a pot maybe dries better, but I don't grow a lot of orchids potted. I do 90% mounts, uh, maybe more. So we're gonna moisten this last guy down hardly attached anyway. <clears throat> Get rid of that. We are going to take our trusty razor blade, not cut ourselves, but cut the fishing line off. 
we go right into our little garbage bowl thing here. And then we are gonna just start pulling on it a little bit. Gently, of course. I, like I said, I really don't think this thing's mounted fastened very well anyway. Yeah, I think it's just these two roots right here. So we're gonna take our trusty razor blade. I don't know, maybe I'm off camera. We're gonna take our trusty razor blade and we're just gonna slide it under the root and we're just gonna lift. I don't cut away, I literally slide it under and I just lift. And a lot of times that's all you need to do. You get down to where it gets tight and you just lift. And see, that whole root just popped free. No problems. We're gonna come down to this root and there's a space between the root and the mount here, just, just shy of the base. And that's where we're going to slide the razor blade in, being careful not to cut the root. Oh, well, terrible angle. Being careful not to cut the root. And we're just going to lift straight up. A little bit at a time, kind of gently prying. And because we moistened the mount, this is possible. If that orchid was dry, you would not be able to do that. And look, that is a rootless I'm sorry, that is a leafless orchid. I mean, obviously only one, two, three roots were attached, but successfully off the mount in just a few minutes. I hope you can see that. I think I'm here. Okay. So that is why I think this is a very important tool when you're unmounting orchids. One root here. And that is all we are gonna do to this plant it is going to go straight on a new mount. We will take some peroxide and we are just going to give it a good soak. This is 3%. And this is my first leafless orchid mounting, but what I've read is that you want to make sure that you keep the plant the right way up, which makes sense. So this was the bottom side, this is the top side, and that is how we want to make sure we keep that plant on its new mount. Um, this is not going to get mounted with any media. I'm going to just commit myself to watering this plant every day. And I found a nice, gnarly, holy piece of bark here with a little ledge. I don't know if you can see that, but it's got a nice little ledge right here that this plant, I think, is going to sit very nicely, yep, right on. And we're just barely going to have to tie it down a bit. Again, there's no moss, nothing's going to go on this mount. And that is all we're going to do for the Kyloschista. I'm going to go ahead and get that done, and we'll be right back. And here we have our freshly mounted Kyloschista. And I think it's really going to like that mount. Like I said, it's got that little shelf. And it just sits really perfectly there. The roots kind of wrap around this mount already. So it shouldn't take long to get going if it does decide to get going. But we'll be right back and we'll take an another one of these orchids off its mount and take a look at it. So our next orchid is going to be Dendrobium aberrans. This one's on a stick mount from Andes. And these can be really tricky or they can be really, really easy. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is probably going to be a little tricky, but we may be, may be surprised. So we've got a new root coming right here we want to be real careful with. And other than that, I don't see any new growth, so I'm a little nervous to do this, but it just has to come off here. It just, it just has to. It stinks. Oh, it stinks to all holy you-know-what. So oh, let's get this cut off. So we're going to go ahead and tease at the moss a bit. hope you guys can see all this. Just tease the moss a little bit and start picking away at it very gently, making sure we're not going to mask her any roots or anything. Well, this plant is definitely, oh, I done did it. I broke the root tip. Now I'm mad, I'm just gonna tear it off. <laughs> One of these had an active tip, which it's probably 
on now too. Okay, so again, we've got our orchid here, unmounted. I demolished one root tip. I found another one, thankfully. And I am not going to dig any farther into this plant. I don't want to mess things up. Um, because there's no new growth coming yet that I can see or I can tell. I just don't want to risk it. So we're just going to go ahead and spray it up real good with peroxide. And uh, go ahead and get our mount ready. I hope you guys can see this. You probably can't. Fishing line is so tricky to work with. But I take my fishing line, all right, I leave a good tag end, four or five inches long, and then you just make a loop, okay? You take that loop and you tie it around itself. All right, so you have a loop with the knot below it, okay? You pull that tight, and then you take the tag end and the line and pull it through that loop, and it makes like a lasso. That's all you need to do. And then put that part onto the back of your mount. And I try to keep the first tie right where I want my plant. That way you get in the right spot. And you just pull it through and go back the opposite way and it's nice and tight. Very similar to the way Roger does it, I just tie a different knot. So we're going to take our plant here. God, I don't even know if you can see this. We're going to take our plant, we're going to find the spot that we want for it. And that's it. Directly onto the bark, we're going to tie our first wrap around the base of the plant. I'm going to go around one of these old little seedling bulbs. Snug but not tight. Or too tight, I should say. And then we're going to go around again at the base of the plant on the top side. And that's it. That holds the whole plant on. This is the moss we moistened earlier. And we're going to take some strands of it, shake it out, and just put a thin layer around this plant on the bottom side. Now I'm leaving a gap between the moss and the base of the plant. I think that's very important. Not a huge gap, but enough of a gap to where I don't have to worry about this moss rotting the base of that plant. A couple nice long strands. These I like to just fold in half, and then you just drape them right across. These long ones we're going to kind of wrap down because there's some roots there, and in case the base of the plant decides it wants to push out roots in that direction. So you've got like a, a nice cradle or a nest of moss around your plant with the plant strapped directly to the cork bark. Those roots can go anywhere they want to go. If they want to go in the moss, they will. If they want to grow aerial, they will. And that way you don't ever have to worry. And there you go. That is a freshly mounted, Oop, let's get that out of there. as a freshly mounted Dendrobium aberrans. I'll be back and we'll get to it on another one. All right, the next plant I think we're gonna mess with today is, uh, let's do it. This is Lelia Pum, oh, I always forget, Pumilla. I have Pumilio, Pumillum, Pumillas, I have all kinds of Pumules, so it is tough to keep track of them sometimes. Um, I've got another really gnarly, holy mount for this thing. Uh, we're going to put some moss on this. This, interestingly enough, upon doing some research, this is one of the few Lelias that actually likes to stay pretty moist um, for a Cattleya. I don't keep it Masdevallia moist, but I mean this media, I don't let it dry out very much. 
Um, what I do is I also keep it a lot shadier than I would normally keep any Lelia. Um, it, and that's how it grows. It grows farther down. It grows in moist jungles. Um, it really doesn't grow like your standard Cattleya type. And that's kind of why I like it. I like oddballs. I like things that are weird and different. And uh, this is one of them. It also has a killer bloom. Um, I will remember and put one up. But yeah, this thing is going to be really, really neat one day. And I just think it's going to look a lot better on that. So we'll get to it and we'll be back. So we have a new root around the back of this mount. So that's by far going to be the trickiest one. And it uh, goes against what I said before. But when you're on the back of a mount and you want to save a root, I like to try to start at that point. If we lose this root, it's going to be in this bend right here. Because this is going to come off pretty good, I feel, and so is this part, but it's really going to be tricky. So we want to make sure that we slide in. Fortunately enough, the root tip hasn't attached yet. So we're going to slide in, and we're just going to lift, again, the, the root. We're going to do the same thing on the top side, because it grew down the moss and then it grew to the mount and then over. So we've got a gap right here that we can start and we can just gently lift. Oh, terrible angle again. I'm trying to film this, I'm, I'm not used to that, so. Lift, 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 lift. If you hear a crunch, stop. Figure out what you gotta do. You might have to slide the razor blade under it and lift. But you can do that, especially on these cedar boards, because you can get it right down to the edge and not really have to worry about damaging the root too much. So we've got the top part loosened up, and we've got the side part loosened up. What we're going to do is we're going to take the back of the razor blade, the non-sharp part, <clears throat> non part, and we're going to slide it up in there very carefully. And we're just going to use that to push the root off that side on both sides of the corner. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But this is how I've had my best success doing it. And then you can pop it under and you can just free up the whole root. Now you see that whole root is saved as long as I don't mess it up from here on out. But that whole root has detached successfully from this mount with just a razor blade. That was the one I was most concerned about. These other ones are gonna come off real easy. Again, it's a cedar board. You can do it either way. And you just slide it under and lift up a little bit. If it's too hard, clamp down a little bit and you can just slide right under it and pry it up as you're going and it pops free. Now we've got the roots that are attached to the mount on one whole side. And this is the side away from my new root because I don't want to damage that. Starting to come away. This whole plant's starting to rock. So what I like to do is I like to have a look in there. I can see if we can pop this last one free. I don't want to damage this one either. There we go. And see if we can start teasing the rest of this plant away. So we've got our Lelia pumilla right here. We're going to give it the spray. I damaged two roots, but none of the new ones, older ones. I'm pretty happy about that. And I think I found another new growth that's starting. So we're going to have not one but two, I believe, new growths coming on this plant. We're gonna skip forward after we get this thing mounted, but yeah, that's gonna look great. So that is where this plant is going. Awesome. All right, guys, we'll be back in a moment. Okay, so we're back with our Lelia Pamilla, and it is mounted nicely again on cork. One more down. Next to last plant we're going to look at is the Comparetia speciosa. 
And this is coming off here. Should be pretty easy again. Carefully pull our existing fishing line off. Give the plant just a little tug, see how it is. Let's see, it's not too bad. We've got some new root tips that we're going to desperately try to preserve. But other than that, it should be okay. The lifting technique works really good with the fine roots. But the corner technique, oops, see that one just lifted right off. We got lucky. Doesn't always work well. So, here's our last one. It's up in there. slide your blade under and lift right off and that's it clean wiry fine roots preserved it really is a good method guys try it out it takes a little bit of practice and you got to treat the wiry roots a little bit differently <clears throat> than you treat the thick fleshy roots but it really 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 is effective as you can see okay, so here is our Comparetia speciosa off the mount ready for its peroxide and a facelift so we'll be back in just a second we'll take a look at what it looks like on its new mount so here we have our freshly mounted Comparetia speciosa looking nice fresh with the tag and everything ready to get watered okay so this one I'm fully expecting to be a mess and yes, I really am putting this little tiny plant on this big mount because I'm expecting it hopefully to grow in. I've seen a much bigger. Um, I think this is a very young division and I want to make sure that once it gets going, I don't have to touch it for a while. It's got really compact sphagnum moss down here. All the roots have grown on the outside of that moss. So they really want a lot more oxygen and a lot less dampness, you know, I, I think. That's usually a good sign. That is Ionopsis utricularioides. We're going to call it quits. Let's go look at these plants that we've just mounted and find them a new spot or find them their spot. Okay, so we're back again. Uh, we've got everything hung up. Let's go ahead and take one last look around. I have the Puffinia rugosa right about where it was before, hung up next to its Dracula friend. It loves the shade, it loves to stay moist. I treat it just like I do a Dracula or a Mastavillia in my environment. I've got the Comparidia speciosa up here. It gets zero sunlight, honestly. It's behind the fan and the sun is that way. So it never gets to see the sun. It gets bright indirect light and it gets light from my lights above. But that's it and it seems to be growing pretty happy since I've gotten it. Uh, it's put on new growth like I've said so I'm pretty content that it's going to be a happy camper. I have moved my Dendrobium aberrans down in the depths here next to some other plants. It's going to get pretty bright shade. It's behind a whole front row of Oncidium types and things like that so they take up a lot of the light and it's just going to be nice bright shade to get back to Dendrobium aberrans, at least until I can figure it out a little bit more. We have put our Ionopsis utricularioides up here, right back where it was, right below the Senili and right next to the Dyneema polybulbin. I think it's gonna be a good spot. It gets filtered sun through all these other plants and through the shade cloth and whatnot, but I think it's gonna do well. And finally, we have our, oh, Kylo Schista. I've moved him down. Um, they like bright light, but they really don't like the sun too much, I've been reading. Um, they like to dry out pretty quickly. That's why I didn't put any media on it. So it gets good airflow down there. I put them down there with some other bright shade lovers, and I think it's going to do just fine. Am I forgetting something? Oh, I am. I was like, I know I did more than that. So then we have the Lelia Pumilla down here right back where it was at and everything just looks so much better we only have a couple sticks left to get rid of the sticks look fine they just don't do well and one uh, evil little cedar board right there that has to go immediately 
So this is going to conclude our mounting session. I really appreciate you guys. I, I hope you enjoyed it. I really do. I've got plenty more to do in here, but I just wanted to take you along with me while I did some maintenance and got some stuff out of the way. Honestly, I killed two birds with one stone. Oh my goodness. Look at that. We looked at this before and it was not that far open. Wow, in just a couple hours, look at that. Well, tomorrow maybe we'll do a bloom video and see what that happens. See what happens with that. But I'm very excited. Man, that opened up real quick. So that really does conclude our remounting video. Thank you guys one last time. I really do appreciate you watching. I hope you guys are staying safe, and I hope to see you again soon. Happy growing.